Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Pivot Boss pre market video for Friday, February 28th, 2020. Happy Friday, everyone. I am Frank Ochoa, aka Pivot Boss. Here's a look at the daily time frame of the ES, and I'm quantifying it here over the recent seven day drop. So, from the highest high here to the lowest low, that's been seven days now. Not a full day here today, so there's plenty more range that could be seen. But down here, you'll notice that. I've quantified that 518 and a half points of range, 300 percent of average uh, range. That's you know obviously we've seen lately. Back here we have dropped all the way back to 28.79 on the low, uh, coming back into those October lows. Remember from those lows it was one month, two months, three months, four and a half months, almost basically five full months except for the last week of the month taking out all of those gains a tremendous move this move uh, rivals any any significant move that we've seen over the last decade plus uh, on such a short uh, period of time so significant move here one thing that is clear now is that we are at the top end of the recent major range here so for example if we bring this 2900 over um, right in this zone you'll see there's some resistance that came in right in here became support right so we had resistance price got above it and failed then came back to it chopped right at it and exploded now we're right back at that zone the impulse sell-off is significant uh, but when you get an impulse sell-off whenever you can find that strong low there is a high probability bounce back to the midpoint of that impulse move the midpoint right here is 31 38 quarter the odds are very, very high to reach a midpoint, whether that's the midpoint or perhaps it, it adjusts a little bit next month. But obviously, this is the last trading day of the month. Next month is March. We have the current low here, the current last price here. Again, if this is the first trading day of March, we could reject and start to bounce right away. And we could be looking at a move right back toward 3150, 3140, somewhere in that zone. So again, we're still on the downswing here. We have to find that strong low. Today, keep an eye on 29.60. If price starts to push above 29.60, 29.65, it really opens up quite a bit more upside that could be seen. Otherwise, right now, this market has been beat up on these coronavirus fears, uh, and that could continue until we get to even lower key levels. I mentioned before, failing where we where we have suggests that we likely get back toward the 2700. So we may see even a bit more downside here. So we have to see. Uh, and be patient for that major, major strong low. All right, let's take a look here at the NQ. Again, very, very wide range of movement here over the last seven sessions. Uh, 1,600 plus points of range, 1,600, 263% of average. Uh, this thing has rolled all the way back again. If we look at this, uh, just, just from this perspective here, we have a major area of resistance that has now become support so right here we got the upside break and we've come in all the way back to that zone we hit the 200 day right between 80 uh, 8,000 and 8,200 and again if this is the impulse sell-off if that's the strong low not likely but if it is then we come back to the midpoint of the range 8946 sometime early next month again we have the the current low here next Monday will be the first trading day of March we could see some sort of strong rejection that can push us up. Now, if you want some sort of blueprint for this, go back to May. This is how it played out in May. May was uh, a trap here and then sold off the entire month on a gap down on sun on Sunday, uh, on various Sundays. This was the last trading day of May. Or sorry, this was the last trading day of May. This was June right there. Uh, and that was the low before it just snapped up back to the recent high. So I'm not saying we come all the way back up, but if this is the impulse sell-off, I think it's going to be, we likely come back to the mid and establish a new key range. That's what likely happens here moving forward. So right now, still waiting for that strong low. All right, let's take a look now at crude oil. Crude oil has been very, very weak as well. Same type of uh, sell-off, you know, linked to the same type of, uh, trigger here this one gap down on a Sunday here after having a very strong push up and has just been driven to new lows we have not seen these lows in a very long time I mentioned before breaking 49s doesn't have any support down here until you get to 42 half 
So 42 half is the next major support level down. We're currently sitting at 45 half or thereabouts. The 42 half is going to be this low right there. That's the next major low to get. Uh, again, you can see right here, that's kind of the level. And so any bounce next month, early next month, could be a selling opportunity for a continuation to, to test that low and perhaps take it out. If we do get a rejection down here, because that's the bottom of value on a, on a, on a uh, composite basis, we could get down to the bottom of value, build out, and then snap back to value at 53, and perhaps get back to the top of value around 62 down the way. So this is going to be a major, major opportunity coming up soon. Although right now, much more selling pressure likely ahead until we take out those 42 half lows. Lastly, taking a look here at gold futures. With gold, again, we've seen a major, major push higher. Um, on this day here, we talked uh, and said, you know, this looks like it's, it's a short-term top. And we could see an intraday reversal back to 1660. And because that happened, we saw a rejection tail develop and from there we've seen this thing steadily work lower 1660 has also become the area of resistance to watch it's become the right shoulder of an absorption signature and overall that would suggest more weakness ahead if price cannot stay above the 1620 zone and right now we are knocking on the door of 1620 if we cannot stay above 1620 it opens up more downside Obviously, right now, the market is very bullish overall, and you wouldn't want to short gold for any long period of duration. But any movement here now suggests, you know, as long as it can hold above 1600 suggests maybe some sideways to up could still be ahead as this market continues to push higher. So more upside could be ahead here for this one. 1620 is going to suggest more short-term downside, but if it can hold that level, we may be... A, uh, bouncing back towards 1660 very soon on a short-term basis. All right, that is it for now. We'll see how this plays out heading into the rest of the session. Good luck. Trade well. Happy Friday. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the trading room. Take care.